Good morning, good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why are we rejoicing? Because our Savior lives. He is risen. The word is extra, extra. Read all about it. The headline, Jesus is alive. The eyewitnesses said, the tomb is empty. Matthew 28, 5 through 6. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. We just bless God for another day. Amen. Good morning, First Rabbit Hill again. And good morning to our pastor and First Lady uh, Bracey and those that are watching us on Facebook or YouTube. We just bless God for another day. We are excited. So we should be rejoicing and acting like we serve a risen Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he has done so much for us. And so we bless his name on today. Let us humble our hearts for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you for another Resurrection Sunday, giving you all praise and glory, because you live. You live. Yeah. Hallelujah, God, we bless your name for the finished work that you did on the cross for us. You who knew no sin died for our sins, O oh God. So we say thank you. We're grateful on today. God, we ask you to come now and be in our midst. Move all down the aisle from heart to heart and breast to breast, God. Have your way in this place, oh God. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, oh God, because you're worthy. We bless the name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have our congregation selection found on page 119. He lives. He lives. He lives. Let us all stand.
Amen. He lives. He lives. You ask me how, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. We'll now have another selection by the choir. Can we go back? Can, can we go back in time? Yes. Yes. It was a Friday about 2,000 years ago. And my Jesus hung on the cross. They whipped him. They spit on him. They talked about it. But he hung on the cross and the more we think about it the more we've come to the conclusion conclusion that it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross it wasn't the spear that they pierced him in his side with that held him to the cross but it was his love for you and for me and we've come to just remind y'all today that it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. Come on, clap your hands.
everybody with his love for you and me. And it's not because he didn't have the power to come down from the cross, but it was his love for you and me. Because we know he's got the power. Roberts will come and take us to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, I don't know about you, but I need him. I've come to realize that there is nothing that I can do without Christ in my life mess things up but I can't get it right without Christ with all that's going on in the world you know we, we just need Christ we can't do it or handle it on our own Father I stretch Ah. Uh. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. 
thank you for just being you. God, we thank you for this morning when we were asleep. God, you reached down and touched us. And when you woke us, we were clothed and in our right mind, God. And we just say thank you. God, you kept her from danger, seen and unseen as we traveled here today, oh God. And we say thank you. God, we just want to thank you, oh God, for your many blessings. But God, we can't help but realize that hearts are heavy on today, oh God. Over the incident, oh God, in our neighboring state in Maryland, oh God, families are grieving on today, God. And we ask that you would send comforter right now, oh God, in the way of the Holy Spirit, oh God, to bring comfort to those bereaving families, oh God. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus, because we know, oh God, that you are a, not only a healer, God, but you can bring comfort. And let them know that you still, oh God, we serve a risen Savior on today who lives within our hearts, oh God. God, we ask that you look down on our country, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we don't have the answers, but our trust and hope is in you, oh God. That you would turn things around, oh God, as only you can, oh God. But you've given us a work to do, God. You've asked that we go out in the highways and byways and tell a dying world that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, oh God, that you live and that you stand ready to save, oh God. So God, I pray for every soul that's under the sound of my voice right now, if they don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that they might come asking, what must I do to be saved, oh God? For we know that you will meet them there. God, we pray for those in hospitals, oh God, in nursing homes, oh God, and those who may be at home, oh God. We know you as a healer. We ask that you would stretch out your hand right now and touch bodies all over this world, oh God. That you would change the diagnosis, oh God. That you would change the prognosis, oh God. If that be your will. God, we accept your will right now, oh God. Those that may be on their way to the doctors or to the hospitals next week, oh God, we ask that you would accompany them during that visit, that you would give the doctors what they need in order to understand that which needs to be done. God, we pray for everyone in this branch of Zion, oh God, that we ask that you would have us to do and be what you've called us to be, oh God. But God, forgive us for those things that we've done, those things that we said that were not pleasing in your sight, oh God. We ask that you forgive us and cleanse us right now. Anything that's in our hearts that's not like you, oh God, we ask that you would take it away in the name of Jesus, for we have a mighty work to do in your name. God, we give your name the glory and the honor, for you alone are worthy. These and all of the blessings we ask in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God. We thank God for the fervent prayer coming from Deacon Dennis Robinson and even the chant coming from the choir. He was too hungry for us. Hallelujah. He didn't deserve it, but because he loved us just that much. So we should be excited on today because it should have been you and it should have been me hanging on the cross, but our Jesus went to the cross for each of us. So we should be excited on today, giving God praise, giving him glory, giving him honor for all that he's done and continues to do for each of one of us. So we just bless God on today. We thank God for what he's doing right now. And at this time, we'll have our greetings and announcements, followed by our women's history presentation by Sister Tony Brown. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to see each and every one of you worshiping with us on this beautiful, beautiful Easter Sunday morning. Our announcements for today are as follows. Bible stop study and intercessory prayer, Wednesday, April the 3rd, 6.30 and 7 p.m. Sunday school, 9.30 a.m. And on the back of your bulletin, you will see that there is an early prostate cancer detection event here at First Driver Hill on April the 27th from 9 to 12 p.m. And there is a registration number there for you to call. Also, we do have congratulations to Lady Rosa. She's on the air right now. Uh, and special congratulations to her. Also, in your bulletin, you do have First Drive Here Baptist Church Women's Ministry presents the Promise and Faith Fashion Show, and that will be held Saturday, April the 13th, and a rainbow tea. Uh, it will be from 12 noon to 2 p.m., followed by a fashion show. Please hold on to this announcement because it also talks about our women's conference that we will be coming up the following week. We have some happy birthdays and some happy anniversaries. We have some folks that are celebrating their birthdays. We have Terry Holmes on March 31st. We have Teresa Key, my tea on April the 1st. We have Brother David Stevens, April the 4th. And Brother Johnny George, uh, April the 4th as well. Then we have some anniversaries here. We have Brother Elma Senior and Sister Eula Holmes, March 25th, 67 years. 67 years, and that deserves a hand clap. Also, Brother Z and Sister Tiffany Jefferson Pierce, April the 2nd, 2024. These are your notices and announcements for today. Please govern yourselves accordingly, and please check your bulletin, and please look at the announcements again. Thank you. I did ask the question, aren't you glad we serve a risen Savior? Yes, yes. Happy Resurrection Day. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I'm glad, about, but I'm going to go on with what I'm supposed to do. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me and you and all of us, I get excited. But my task for today is to present our women's history um, woman for this last Sunday in March, and it is Gladys May West. She's an American mathematician known for her contributions to mathematical modeling of the shape of the earth and her work on the development of satellite geodesy 
models that were later incorporated into the global positioning system, GPS. Gladys May Brown was born in Southern Virginia in Dinwiddie County, a rural county south of Richmond. Her family was an African-American farming family in the community of sharecroppers. She spent much of her childhood working on her family's small farm, as well as working on the farm. Her mother worked in a tobacco factory and her father worked for the railroad. West saw education as a way to a different life. At West High School, the top two students from each graduating class received four scholarships to Virginia State College. West graduated as valedictorian. She was determined. I read in another article that she said she was going to work hard to make sure that she was in the top of her class because she could not see herself um, farming the rest of her life. She knew that there was more. She chose to study mathematics, a subject that was mostly studied at her college by men. She also joined the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Yes. West graduated in 1952 with a Bachelor of Science degree in math and then taught math and science for two years in Waverly, Waverly, Virginia. West returned to Virginia State to complete a Master of Mathematics degree, graduating in 1955. Afterward, she began another teaching position in Martinsville, Virginia. In 1956, she was hired to work at the Naval Proving Ground in Dahl Ground, Virginia, now the Naval Service Warfare Center. Here, she was the second black woman ever hired and one of only four black employees. She was a computer program in the Dahl Ground Division and a project manager for processing systems for satellite data analysis. Concurrently, concurrently, excuse me, West earned another degree in public administration from the University of Oklahoma. In the early 1960s, she participated in an award-winning study that proved the regularity of Pluto's motion relative to ne Neptune. Subsequently, West began to analyze satellite altimeter data from Earth's, um, from NASA's geo geodetic Earth orbiting program to create models of the Earth's shape. She became project manager for, manager for the CSAT radar project and the first satellite that could remotely sense oceans. West work cut her team's processing time in half and she was recommended for a commendation. From the mid 1970s through 1980s, West programmed the IBM 7030 stretch computer to deliver increasingly precise calculations for the shape of the Earth and ellipsoid with additional mutilations known as geoid. To generate an accurate geopotential model, West needed to use complex algorithms to account for variations in the gravitational tidal and other forces that distort Earth's shape. In 1986, she published data processing system specifications for the GeoSat satellite radar altimeter. It was a 51-page technical report from the Naval Service Weapons Center, and this explained how to improve the accuracy of heights and vertical deflection, important components of satellite readings. This was achieved by processing data from the radio altimeter or on the GeoSat satellite which went into orbit in March 12, 1984. She worked at Dahlgren for 42 years and retired in 1998. In 2000, she completed a PhD in public administration at Virginia Tech. Her vital contributions to GPS technology were recognized when a member of her sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, read a short biography was submitted for an alumni function. West was inducted into the United States Air Force Hall of Fame in 2018, one of the highest honors bestowed by the Air Force Space Command. The press release held her as one of the hidden figures, part of the team who did computing for the US military in the era before electronic systems. A reference to the 2016 book by Margot Shetterly, which was adapted into the film Hidden Figures 
The captain commanding officer at the Naval Service Center described her role in the development of GPS this way. She rose through the ranks, worked on satellite geodesy, and contributed to the accuracy of GPS and measurement of satellite data. As Gladys West started her career in 1956, she likely had no idea that her work would impact the world for decades to come. West agreed saying, when you're working every day, you're not thinking, what impact is this going to have on your world? You're thinking, I've got to get this right. As an alumna of Virginia State University, West won the award for Female Alumna of the Year at the Historically Black Colleges and Universities Awards in 2018. She was also selected by the BBC as part of the 100 Women of 2000, 2018. In 2021, she was awarded the Prince Philip Medal by the UK's Royal Academy of Engineering, their highest individual honor. So the next time you get in your car and turn on your GPS or get in your phone and um, tell uh, Alexa or Google or Siri or whoever you talk to to give you the directions to somewhere, think AKA Dr. Gladys West Brown. Amen. Come on, let's encourage Sister Brown. Amen. Amen. She did a fantastic job on this morning. Amen. Amen. That's a lot of information about uh, Sister Mae Brown. Gladys Brown. Yeah, Gladys West. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's Resurrection Sunday. We were talking about it earlier this morning. Um, this is one of those times for Christian that this is Christians that this is our Super Bowl. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this is what we call All Star Week. Every day this week since last Sunday, we've been raising Jesus up. I've had some issues with that because if you raise him up he has to come down but we just been leaving him there all week that's been bothering him but today we're going to let him down and then we're going to raise him back up again that's the truth about the resurrection amen and that we've been down but now it's time to get up Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. <laughs> I, I got one. I got one. Amen. I have one. I have one. But listen, is there any other time in your life where you ought to be excited? It ought to be on today. Amen. Amen. Can I just get somebody just to look back over your life? and see how good God has been to you. Do I have anybody that can testify on this morning that if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, that you can say that you would not be here on today? I can count for myself how many times God has brought me out. That's, that's just for me. But I see about 300 of y'all on this here this morning. And I believe that somebody has a burning desire on the inside that can say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. That can't nobody do me like the Lord. I came to celebrate this morning about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. I've been trying to hold my mule all week, but on this morning, I'm going to testify about the goodness of Jesus, how he brought me out, how he made a way. And I'm standing here because God did it. Somebody say God did it. God did it all by himself. 
That's why we come to give God the best praise that we have. We can sit down any other time. But today you ought to get up. And all you have to say in your mind and your mouth is just thanking it now to be your testimony. Just thank you. Nothing else needs to be said. Just thank you for what he's done. Listen, it's offering time. It's offering time. Our deacons are preparing the tables on today. And it's just great to be in worship today and just to give God back a portion of what he has given unto us. I am always reminded that everything that I have is not because I have done anything to get it or that I deserve it. It is because Jesus first gave to me what he given to what he has given unto us on today. Nothing can beat whatever I decide that I want to give back to him. Because Jesus paid it all. So we thank God for this opportunity that we have. And won't we all stand? Might we all stand? Why don't you pray with me? Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity, God, just to give a portion of that which you have given unto us. God, we thank you for this moment in worship that we can worship you in our giving. And God, now we ask you to bless it, God. Bless it a bountifully, God, that whatever we need, God, your hand shall provide. And so, God, we thank you for this moment just to give. Bless those, God, who wanted to give and did not have to give. But, God, they are willing to give and accept the blessings that you have given upon them on today. Bless us, God, and keep us, God. Continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. And God, we will give you the glory. In Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 I would ask that you turn to the walls and follow the directions of the ushers.
of thee. of the Lord. And thank you so much for your generous giving. Amen. Amen. Listen, just want to remind you just one thing about the early prostate cancer detection event. Uh, we ask that all men sign up. Amen. Amen. That you call the 1-800 number on the back of the program. Listen, this is very important. This is a community event for all men. We want to really get this word out there. Early detection is good. Amen. Early detection is good. We want to make sure that you sign out. This event has been planned. The men are putting this together, and we want to make sure that we get the word out in the community. Amen. To take care of yourself. Amen. 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 There is this certain thing of stigma that men don't need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor. Amen. Uh, we do preventive maintenance on our cars. Amen. We need to do preventive maintenance on our bodies. Amen. 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 Listen, let's get ready for the word on today. It's coming from First Chronicles chapter 15. Um, yeah, I did. The ladies are dressed in their hats on today. Can I get all the ladies to stand up in their hats? Listen, and, and forgive me, charge it to my head and not my heart. Uh, you were supposed to walk around the church today and show your hats off. Amen. Amen. Can, can I just get all the ladies to stand up with your hats on, please? Amen. 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 Uh, I, I do know that there was a time... Oh. Well, come on. Come on. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now, they done started the line. So if anybody else wants to get up and walk in the line, feel free to do so. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know, it is good to laugh in church. Amen. Even on Resurrection Sunday.
See what happens when you let the spirit have his way? Amen, amen, amen. Uh, listen, I would like to see the uh, following sisters after church. Uh, Sister Barbara Jean Robertson, Sister Evelyn Young, Sister Geneva Brown, Sister Patricia Bailey, Sister Yvette Granderson, Sister Gloria Wilson, Sister Janet Robertson, Sister Elder Hope Ward, Sister Dolores Thomas, and Sister Patricia Veal. Can I see you ladies immediately after church right here on the front row, if you don't mind? Amen, amen, amen. Listen, let's get ready for the word on today. It's coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We will First Corinthians chapter 15. I ask that you read verses 1 through 23. We will go over the entire chapter, but we're going to just read verse number 12. Amen. 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 Listen, the choir is coming back with a song. Let's encourage them as they come. They said I wouldn't make it. Yeah. They said I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. They said I never mind to anything. Yeah. But I'm glad to say yeah. that I'm on my way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gaining closer. Stay Lord, I've been talked about, and oh, I've been criticized. I had to wipe many tears from my eyes, but I'm still. Anybody that's still holding on? 
Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to God, who is definitely the head of our lives. It is his spirit that our souls are anchored in to his son, Jesus the Christ, who has come to give us life, and that we have that life and have it more abundantly to the Holy Ghost who has once again orchestrated our steps to this sacred and hollow place on this morning. Church, as I say every day of my life, when I open my eyes before my feet hit the ground, I tell God, thank you because it's good to be alive and just have another opportunity to worship our God. Listen, if you could stand with me, bring in your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're just going to read verse number 12 on today, but we will cover verses 1 through 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 12, and it reads, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say among you that there is no resurrection? of the dead. Amen. You may be seated. Won't you pray with me? Father, I thank you once again uh, for this opportunity, this bold and grand opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk to preach, teach, and to declare your holy word. God, I ask for fresh anointing, that anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. God, let this word edify your people, that your son Jesus the Christ is glorified. Thank you, God, just for another opportunity that you have allowed us to come together and just worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you and we love you. It's in that wonderful name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And all of God's children said amen. 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 I just want to talk just for a moment while the spirit of the living God shall lead and guide. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection. This chapter is a very interesting chapter that Paul writes to the church at Corinth. Uh, He writes to the Christians who really do not believe in the resurrection. Uh, He's talking to a small group of people. He's trying to correct them on what they believe. And so doing this, he gives some negative things about the resurrection that if you do not believe, then those of us who do believe, we should not be here. So really, the fact that you and I have this moment of today, or on today rather, is because of the fact that we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That we believe that he lived, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day morning. That is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the word that we preach, whereby when we hear it, we are saved. And that we are transformed. And So thereby reading this and understanding this on this day, I believe that many of us that are sitting here on today, if not many of us, then all of us. Believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The doctrine of the resurrection is the belief that Jesus was raised from the dead on that third day morning after his crucifixion. And that through his victory over death, all of us who believe in that share in that victory as well. The resurrection is the cardinal principle and the doctrine of Christianity. Everything that we believe holds sacred stands and falls on the fact that Jesus rose on the third day morning. Listen, if Jesus, if God did not raise Jesus from the dead, then we are no better than the worst sinner this morning. If God did not raise Jesus from the dead, the Bible is a falsehood of stories and that we have no hope. If God did not raise Jesus from the dead, then we have no gospel to preach. We have no savior to preach about. That means that we are most miserable amongst all men. If God did not raise Jesus from the dead, then Jesus is guilty of deception. Because he said, if you destroy this temple, 
He says, I will raise it up again. Jesus also said, therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. And I have the power to lay it down. He says, I have the power to take it up again. He says, this is the commandment that I receive from my father. If Jesus is dead, then we have no hope. The Bible teaches us and talks of us. It explains to us that five times in the Bible, Jesus was denied. Jesus is alive. destroy the resurrection, you reduce the status of Jesus being just an ordinary man. He is no longer God. For the Bible declares to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, the resurrection from the dead. I believe in the resurrection. To destroy the resurrection. And you have destroyed the reason for our justification. That means that there was no atonement for our sins. No wonder the devil hates the doctrine of the resurrection. If you can convince men that Jesus is dead, then we will believe that there is no such thing as salvation. And I come to believe in salvation because what I stand on is salvation because I know deep in my heart that Jesus died for me. That he paid it all for me. But this is, perhaps this is why we already have made up in my mind, no matter how you feel about it, no matter how you think about it, that we came in here this morning to give God the best praise that we have because we believe that Jesus died on Calvary's cross for us on today. Now, thank God this morning that we know the resurrection of Jesus Christ to be fact in our lives. It is a factual statement, and we believe in that. And that's why this morning I want to spend some time with us on today so that we can understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it has done for us. We have factual proof that Jesus died on the cross. That's good news on the day because you can tell me a lot of things, but if I don't have the burden of proof, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I, I remember as a young child growing up, I told my mother that my grades weren't going to be right. That's all right. She said, that's okay. But when she saw the grades, it was a different story. <laughs> Real different. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the Bible is concrete information put on paper that Jesus lived. But not only that he lives, but that he died for you and I on today. Amen. Here's the first thing that we understand about this, is that I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because it was predicted. It was predicted. Verse number four states this, and he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Here's a story that is written. It says one day that a little girl proclaimed to be a Christian, a faithful Christian. A smart man being sarcastic responded, and he said, saying, which Christ? She said, there are many. Her answer was classic. She said, sir, there are many pretenders, but I worship the one that rose from the dead. Resurrection was not an event for men to know nothing. It was forecasted. It was anticipated. And it was all done and said before it even took place. Listen, Jesus talked about it. He said he teached them and taught them that the son of man must suffer many things and to be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes. And they killed him. And after three days, he rose again. The resurrection paints a picture before 
anything took place, the picture was already set about the resurrection. It was done in the Old Testament. For the Bible records, for Jonas was in the belly for three days and three nights, in the belly of the whale. And so shall the Son of Man be, in the, be on the cross and in the grave for three days and three nights, in the heart of the earth. The prediction of the resurrection and the fulfillment provides and proves that Jesus is worthy for us to worship him on this morning. Amen. I need to know somebody, do you believe in the resurrection based upon what you read and what you know for yourself that Jesus lives and he lives today? Amen. The prediction of the resurrection and the fulfillment of it proves that Jesus is worthy to be worshiped now and forevermore. I have proof. And I believe in the resurrection. Lest I keep you too long, let me move a little closer. Is that I have proof of the resurrection. I have proof for the reason that Jesus died on the cross. The tomb was sealed. The fear of the disciples was evident that when they saw him, once the stone had been removed from the tomb, right. no one stole him. The body was gone. The Romans did not take the body. Yeah. Therefore, that leaves only one thing, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. Uh, there is proof of Human testimony is not a hallucination. There was more witnesses about the resurrection than signing of the Declaration of Independence. There's more witnesses about the resurrection and people who believe in the resurrection than, than Queen B in a concert. And now that she has her new cowboy Carter, there's still more witnesses about the resurrection than any stadium can hold. I don't care how many political parties that we have when they come together. I don't care thousands of men, uh, members that are in a party. I don't care about the inauguration of the presidency. There are more truths, more witnesses about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus lives on today. I have proof, common experience for myself. The disciples were sad in the death that Jesus would die. They were in fear, but three days later, they were happy as can be because they were filled with the power of Jesus Christ based upon the resurrection from the dead. I need to have somebody here that knows that you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's proof that Jesus lived. Look at your life and think about how things are on today. And think about if there was no resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I couldn't even imagine what I would do if I did not know Jesus for myself. Amen. It's proof that the resurrection of Jesus changes lives. Yeah. The disciples, they were forever transformed after the resurrection. Especially Simon Peter. For the Bible records that Jesus appeared to his disciples after the resurrection and spoke to Peter himself and restored his fellowship to the body after Peter had denied Jesus three times, asked him then to feed his sheep. Now, I don't know about you, but that's good news on today. That how many times you and I have denied Jesus based upon our actions. Y'all don't look at me like that. How many times have you denied Jesus because you cut somebody out? How many times have you denied Jesus because you did not speak to your neighbor whom you see every day, but you worship Jesus whom you have not seen? I need to know on today, does anybody recognize that your life has been changed? Just look over in this room on today and look at everybody whose life has been changed since they came down the aisle and gave their life to Jesus Christ. Yeah, look at the blood-stained believers to the left of you and to the right of you. I believe that Jesus has changed 
somebody's life in this room on today. And if Jesus has done anything for you, done anything to somebody that you know, then you ought to start waving your hands on this morning and just giving God a little bit of wave offering for the great things that he has done in your life. That's right. You don't have to say anything. I know God has changed you for yourself because you got up early this morning in anticipation to say that he got up from the dead on this morning. I say that Jesus has transforming power that when he rose up from the dead, if any man be in Christ, they are new creatures. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. I believe in the resurrection. But more than that, I believe that Jesus lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives in me. Here's the last thing just before I go take my seat. The resurrection gives us a future. The resurrection gives us a future. It activates. A dead savior can save no one. The gospel hasn't been preached until we have told the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. My mama always said, boy, if you're going to preach, you got to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because that's the only thing that's going to save somebody's life. And get them into heaven. The gospel declares our authentic faith. Verses 17, verses 14 and 17. The power of the resurrection. That is that we believe in his power. That gives us hope. And then it gives us peace. It arranges our justification. Because Jesus lives. God had anticipated his death as a payment for our sins. All who will put their faith in him shall be justified. Therefore, he sees us not as sinners, but saints through his blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. That there is a word you and I don't even talk about much anymore. That is atonement. We, we don't bring things up like that in church anymore. We don't even talk about sin. We, we don't talk about We talk about what happens after we get saved. But you need to know who you were before you got saved. And the process of how you got saved that you could be here on today. Amen. You see, in the old church, in the Old Testament, they talked about that. They let us know that the priests had to go into the temple. And while he went into the temple, they had to tie a rope around the priest because the priest had to stand up all day and all night shedding the blood from animals so that they could be free from the sins that they committed. And while they tied the rope around them, there was bells around the rope to let them know that if the priest had died, that they could pull the priest out and then send another priest in to make atonement for the sins of the people. But aren't you glad that when Calvary Cross came to our way, that the veil was ripped, and now there's no longer a priest for us, that Jesus Christ intercedes on our behalf. And the blood that was shed, was the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The sinless lamb went to Calvary's cross on our behalf. And because of that, you and I have a future on this morning. Uh, that's good news on the day. Somebody ought to be shouting that I have a future and that my future is guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Because he died for us. Not only that, uh, 
It's an anticipated future. Jesus is our guarantee. Because he lives, we also live. This is what the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians verse 14 through 6, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which who are alive and remain, that's us, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. That means I got a forward and address. That means that my destination doesn't end here on this world. But yet I'm there with God in the hereafter. Somebody say, I got a forward and address. Because he lives, I know where my final destination will be. My final destination will be that I will be with Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God on this morning that he lives. That we praise the Lord based upon the works that he did on Calvary's cross. That he is not there in the tomb. For he has risen. For he has said, come to a place and see where the Lord lays. But he is no longer there. I'm glad on the day that he got up. Because he lives, we can also have everlasting life. Because he lives, tomorrow is worth living. Because he lives, I know that I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I have hope. And I have a future. Well, I told you earlier that this week has been a rough week for me. I've been talking to preachers. We've been doing things. And we've been putting Jesus up on the cross. That he's been there with a crown on his head. His hands and arms with nails in them. His feet with nails in them. His body bent down. His arms stretched wide. The, pier, the sword has been pierced in his soul. But he's still on the cross. For all to see. And I come to tell you on this morning that it has been 365 days since this last Sunday. And I got one day a year on this day when I can actually truly say that no matter what I've been through, my God is alive. No matter how much he's been through, no matter how much weight he's carried for us, no matter how many times we put him in the ground, that we always Pick him up. Amen. That's good news on the day because I don't care how many times somebody says something negative about you. How many times somebody puts you in the ground. How many times somebody talks about you. You can always get up. Amen. That's good news on the day. Amen. Well, since the day is Resurrection Sunday, and that concludes my sermon on today, I got to let you know but that's not the end of the story. Because I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I believe one day that a virgin named Mary was born, given a son by the name of Jesus. That he was born in Bethlehem. That he was reared in Nazareth. That when his father was looking for him, he said, you know, I was about my father's business. And as he matured in life, account the age of 30 to 33, he was performing miracles day in and day out. The word tells me that he turned water into wine. Yeah. The word tells me that he walked on water. Yeah. The word tells me that he healed the blind man. Yeah. The word tells me that he raised Lazarus from the dead. Right. The word also tells me that he walked down the street called Gilgotha up to a mountain that down down the street called the De Velarosa, climbed up the hill called Gilgotha. There on that hill called Skull Mountain that we know as Calvary's Cross. That they hung him high and that they stretched him wide. And then they say that he gave up the ghost and put his head in the locks of his shoulders. And then when he gave up the ghost, then they pierced him in his side. That let us know that the blood was shed for you and I. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission from sin. So can I tell you today that he rose on the third day morning. And the Bible says that when he got up, he got up with all power. 
let me back up for a second. Let's say when he got up, how did he get up? Get up. He got up early. Somebody say early. He got up early. Say it like you mean it. He got up early on Sunday morning with all power in his hands. And that power has now been transferred to you and I. Aren't you glad on the day that you have a risen Savior? That you have a God that loves you and you ought to love him back. Can I tell you how you give God and love him back? You give him the best praise that you got on the inside. You ought to go ahead and start clapping your hands and tell God, thank you that you believe in the resurrection. Because in the resurrection, I have hope. In the resurrection, I have peace. In the resurrection, I have power. In the resurrection, I can love better. In the resurrection, I got more joy. In the resurrection, I got more happiness. In the resurrection, I got more strength. In the resurrection, I got more power. In the resurrection, I got more healing. In the resurrection, I got more peace. In the resurrection, I got a savior that knows that he loves me and I know that he will take care of me. In the resurrection, I got all power that I can move any mountain that comes my way. In the resurrection, I know that I am victorious about whatever I go through today. It's Jesus' day, and we ought to thank God for Jesus, for all that he's done for me. I'm looking at three or four people right now that can give God some praise because God done picked you up and brought you out of a whole lot of stuff. Where are my people that God healed their body? Where are my people that God keeps making a way for you out of nowhere? Where are my people that when you sin, God looked beyond your faults and blessed you with everything you need? When you did not have, God made a way for you. When you could not get it, God paid the way for you. I'm glad on the day that Jesus died for me. I know that might be a little too much. But Paul wanted the Corinthian church to know that if you do not believe in the resurrection, then you are most, like most men, just miserable. If you don't talk about Jesus and the resurrection, you have minimized Jesus to just merely a human being. He has all power. His power is evident because you're living your life on today. Let me say this. It may not be the way you want it. You had plans Plans didn't work out like you thought they should. But can I tell you that if you're here, you are still in God's plan. Amen. And you are right where God wants you to be. Amen. I, I know that's, that's hard to famine. I know it is. I know it is. Why do you allow me to suffer? Why do you allow me to go through? It's all so that he can get the glory. Amen. Because when you go through something, you have a testimony. And you ought to tell your testimony because your testimony help somebody else out that believes. And I believe all of us, all of us, right here on today, has a testimony about how God has brought you out. Amen. How he keeps making a way for you out of no way. How he keeps opening doors. He keeps turning your life around. Yeah. Can I tell you that not by incident or by coincidence, it's just the power of the living God. Amen. You can't doubt him. 
I know too much about. Jesus lives. You don't get anything else out of today. Jesus lives. And because he lives, everything will be all right. I believe that. That's, that's, that's my word. Everything is going to be all right. When I get in trouble, everything is going to be all right. When folks come tell me, Pastor, I don't know, it's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. It's just another opportunity to give God some praise. Amen. Come on, let's all stand up all over this building. Amen. Listen, we've heard the word that's going forth on today. And while Paul was talking to those in the church of Corinth, he also speaks to us on today that we have proof that Jesus lives, that we know for ourselves that he lives. And that no matter how you look at it, Jesus has always been there for us. And this day, we just take time out just to tell him thank you for all that he's done. Our deacons are standing out front. And the truth of the matter is we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that means that the gospel has gone further. That we've talked about this man that we call Jesus. So therefore, perhaps there's one who does not know this man that we're celebrating on today. That who died for us. And in dying for us, he also died for you. And if you do not know him, this is the time for you to come. Won't you come? Won't you come? He's waiting for you. Make no mistake about it. Is that if you do not know him, he will make a way for you. That when you come to him, you don't have to come in any safe fashion or form. That he takes you just as you are. If that's you on the day, won't you come? Won't you come if that's you? Won't you come? Perhaps you know Jesus. And life has been hard. It's been struggling. People have been talking in your ears that caused you to have some doubt. You can't doubt. Because you gave your life to him once before. That means you know too much about him. If you want to recommit, rededicate yourself on the day, won't you come? Or perhaps you heard something you was watching via Facebook or YouTube. And something was said, a song was sung. And you want to be a part of this congregation known as First Gravel Hill Baptist Church. Call us. Give us a call. 757-357-5550. Speak to one of the deacons, one of our staff, a ministerial staff, and we'll introduce you to Jesus. If that's your only day, won't you come? Won't you come? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Uh, just before we get ready to miss, uh, dismiss, I would like to meet with the security team next Sunday, immediately after service. The security team, I'd like to meet with you all. 
next Sunday after service. Amen? Amen. 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 And then remember the ladies' names that I called, the sisters. Would you please meet me down up front? I greatly appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, once again, God, for this day. We thank you for this honor, God, that we have before you on today. That, God, we come to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. Thank you, God, for the works that you did for us on Calvary's cross. God, that gives us hope, God, understanding, and a future. Thank you, God, that you paid it all for us. That you went to Calvary's cross, God, so that we could have the right to the tree of life. God, continue to bless us. Continue to stand on our behalf, God. Continue to intercede for us on our behalf, God. And God, we just love you dearly for all that you have done for us. I know, God, sometimes we may not act like it, God. We don't show it all the time. But today, God, we just want to say thank you. And just give you, God, your just due on today, as we should do every day. But today, God, this is your day. God, we just want to bless you. We just want to bless you and just say thank you. Now, God, we pray for the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost that may rest and abide with each and every one of us from this day forward, now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace.